But Jack, you Yo. just got back from Bali and Singapore. I was just there. This place looked just like it. I feel like I'm in Singapore right now. What's going on everybody? Welcome to another episode of The World NY. Typically every year we find ourselves traveling to Singapore, uh, Malaysia at least once. But as you guys know, 2020 is uh, a little different than other years. We are taking that Singapore, Malaysia trip right here in New York. We're going to two spots. Our first spot is based off the Kopi Tam culture in Malaysia, which is gonna be your casual, chill kind of coffee shop. And our second spot that we're going to is like a high-end Singaporean restaurant. And by the way, guys, you definitely want to keep watching this video to the very end because Laut Singapore is like crazy rich Asians come to America in restaurant form. So for our casual Malaysian Kopi TM spot, we're actually at Kopi TM NYC. One of the owners is from Penang, Malaysia. And Penang, Malaysia does have a lot of crossover with Singapore, but this spot is representing really the Malaysian copy TM culture. Immediately, Andrew, you know what I think stands out to me that lets me know that this is Malaysia? Boom, the coffee. coffee in a bag. Yeah. Every time we were in Malaysia, Andrew, we were drinking all types of drinks out of bags, oh, yeah. homemade, restaurant made. Oh, for sure. We were drinking out of bags. Get in your bag. And we are in the Lower East Side right now. This spot actually opened up like four years ago at a really, really small hole in the wall spot. Very humble. Obviously, they've moved to a bigger area. They have outdoor seating right now. But man, the food is just as authentic. You have to open up any Malaysian, Singaporean breakfast with kaya toast and a soft boiled egg with white pepper. If you guys have ever been to a hotel or even been to any hawker stalls or even been to Toast Box, which is a Singaporean chain, you're going to know that they eat a lot of kaya toast. Toast Box is one of my absolute favorite chains in the entire world. Toast Box, come to New York City, man. Come to LA, come to America. Kaya Toast is a coconut and egg jam. It is just the most popular Singaporean breakfast snack. Kaya Toast. You can't beat it. I'm gonna just say it. Kaya Toast is the best toast in the world. I would put this above French Toast. When I'm in Malaysia, Singapore, I'll get this in a mall. I'll get this off the street. I'll get it from a standalone. Always I'll buy it from your mom. Find yourself some kaya toast for breakfast. I gotta give it a five out of five. It is a five out of five. We have a Malaysian street food battle going on right here. Starting off, Dave, we gotta get into the Hainan chicken versus the Pandan chicken. With the outdoor seating next to the cars, it really feels like we're at a Malaysian cafe outside. So we're gonna start off with the Pandan chicken. So this is kind of like a chicken uh, patty. Pandan, pandan chicken, AKA pan bang chicken. Pandan. This is the true gourmet Malaysian chicken nugget. This one at Kapi TM has a hell of flavor. You got chicken on your face. Chicken on your face, man, and baby, this is crazy. You know what I realized, Andrew? Pandan chicken tastes way better when you eat it with your pan hands. Oh. All right, so our second competitor in the chicken battle, we have, of course, the world famous Hainan chicken rice. As you can see here, you have your ginger scallion sauce, which is not always provided in Singapore, but you have your chili sauce, and then, of course, your soy sauce. All right, have Man. you ever seen chicken rice served in a chicken rice ball? Those I've never seen. Guys, you can see how juicy this chicken is. Look, oh. boom. Wow. wow. Chicken, chicken rice. rice. We had to say it that way. OK. Oh, this is good. A lot of chicken flavor. It always comes with the chicken soup on the side. Oh. As far as the chicken battle goes, hands down, it goes to the chicken I rice. I mean, you got to go with the chicken rice. The Pandan chicken did its thing. Held its own. Okay, next up, we got our noodle battle. Here we have the fish ball with vermicelli soup, and then we have the pan mi. Oh, get the veggies in there too. Oh. Top it off. The uh, fish ball soup. This is a very casual food. Look at these food. noodles, just straight, just look like circles. It almost look uh, like a torn apart padella. It is looking like pasta. Noodle soup battle. All right, all right. What, mm. I had to flip my cap back around. Yo, this fish ball soup, I think it's very light, but it has a very, very deep, I wanna say chicken flavor. The torn noodles, the wood ears, the dried anchovies. Not really a pond me that I'd expect to get. Are those noodles grilled? Yeah, more people should grill the noodles before they put them in the soup. I like the fish ball one too, but at the end of the day, it was well, the pan me. The pan me had a lot of elements. All these little fried anchovies are actually really delicious. 85 year old me picks the fish ball soup. All right, so for our next battle, we got the snack foods. Here we have the ochen, which is the oyster pancake. They eat that pretty much, it looks the same, but with a little bit different spices in Taiwan. And then this is the nasi lemak. 
one of the national dishes of Malaysia. I am really struck by all their sauces here at Kopi Tea, and they've done such a good job. These sauces definitely got the funk. Just a little bit of the chili. I always thought the textures of this made it a really interesting dish. Right. I just know that there's this Chinese Malaysian guy, Andrew, who made this movie called Nasi Lemak, right. and then he made like Nasi Lemak too. I'm not saying oyster pancakes are my favorite, but this one, hella good. Their anchovies and chilies here at Kopi Tea are 10 out of 10. That nasi lemak, was so good because of the way they did the anchovies and the peanuts. I felt pretty torn because I don't like oyster omelets and I like their oyster omelet here at Kopi Tea. I'm gonna let you say first. It's gonna be the oyster pancake. You know why I agree? How often have you seen me go in Bro, and eat more oyster how omelet often pancake? do you eat the oyster omelet, man? I don't know, it's because the Northeastern oysters are like extra high quality too. So last up, in a league of its own, we have the dessert, which is the Penang hand-rolled muachi. Coconut, peanuts, sesame seeds, sugar, muachi. I gotta give props to Kapi Tiam. Clearly, they grew from a small little stall. Kapi Tiam is the most authentically Malaysian experience you can have in Manhattan. Overall, I got to say the pan mi was my favorite. Wow. You know me, they got grilled noodles in here. They all got types of anchovies, wood ears, Man, they did something special with this one. I gotta go with one of the rarest dishes in Manhattan. New York, known for its bread, its bagels, its pizza dough, but they don't have kaya toast. All right, Andrew, that wraps it up for our quick trip to Penang, Malaysia, to Ochoa Road in Singapore. Dude, you excited the chili crab? We roll into the chili crab. What does Singapore mean? Lion City. So to have access to Gramercy Park, you have to not only live in certain units around Gramercy Park so they know it's made for that community, but you also have to have a key, which means that you basically uh, have to pay a monthly fee. Out Singapore is just a couple more blocks down. Oh yes, very ritzy as it should be. I'm excited because I'm in an area I've never been in before. Hi, Andrew, hello. Hello. David, hey, what up? Thanks for having us to your spot, Loud Singapore. Oh no, thank you guys for coming. I really appreciate it. It's about funging time. There's no such uh, Singaporean restaurant around Manhattan that I've seen, especially that represents the true essence of Singapore. I only went there once when I was 10 years old, and that's it for a two day layover. And I never went back since. So I have a lot of really great Singaporean friends, and they would tell me, okay, you're missing this, you're missing this. This is how it's actually created over there. Without them, I couldn't be able to do what I do. What's your flagship item? I would say our chili crab. We have arrived at Laut Singapore. This is probably one of the only places in New York City you can get a chili crab. And actually, this might be one of the only places in America you can get a chili crab like this. Chili crab is one of those dishes that everybody tells you to go to Singapore and get, but then there's not that many places outside of Singapore, at least in America, that you can get this. And of course, you know we could not eat Singaporean food without our homie who just returned from Singapore himself, Jack. The last time I had this, it was in Singapore, and the last time we had this, type of crab dish was in Houston, so. You came back from Indonesia and Singapore recently. You look looking real like Bali right yeah. now. From, from, from the jungle, baby. I know there's a lot of different, like, famous places to get chili crab. It's really expensive in Singapore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we would be Gotta wrong go. to not just get go into win, the chili right. crab. Jack, can I hear your imitation of how Singaporean people talk? Yeah. They call chili crab like chili crab. Chili crab. Chili crab. <laughs> <laughs> Accompanying the chili crab, we got the manto. This oh. is like their steamed bread, right? You're gonna dip just it in the sauce. Up. It was so soft, it actually shocked me when I grabbed it. I was like, oh! Yeah, yeah I'm about to flip the crab head, all right. Wow. When you crack the egg and the chilies all in that sauce, it becomes a whole dipping sauce of its own, you know what I mean? <laughs> chili <laughs> crab. The best way I can describe this is this is like a real gritty uni. Like a uni that had a much harder life growing up. I eat this every day in Singapore. This one feels different. In America, the most plentiful crab is Dungeness, but in Singapore, they're gonna use kind of like the Sri Lankan mud crab. Back in the day, I used to go in on this with my teeth. My yeah, dentist yeah, told me to stop doing stop that. Doing it, right? Ah, spicy. Yeah. So it's a little bit spicy, a little bit sweet, just a little bit sour all together. Oh, Yo, this is actually like chili, chili crab. Yeah. Is that a raw egg? No, no, they cook the egg. It's like simultaneously sweeter and hotter. What I love about the chili crab dish is that it goes a long way even after you eat the crab meat, which obviously crabs, they're not as big as like chicken, for example, but there's all this sauce left right here where you can just dip anything in there, oh, rice, oh, yes. your manto. So you excited. Pass me that pair of yeah. lips over there. Ooh. David, you're supposed to drink it out of the lips. Uh, 
That's how you're right. supposed to do. Pulao Singapore. Perfect for this summer day. Oh, this is very refreshing actually. Oh. Next dish we got, of course, the very, very popular salted egg yolk shrimp. This is a flavor that has been sweeping over that entire area of Southeast Asia and even making it into the United States with the Irving's uh, salted egg yolk chips. I saw them preparing it, so what they were doing, they were cutting off all the legs and splitting the back, butterflying the shrimp, but leaving the shell and the head off. Eat the whole thing, I think in uh, Cantonese, what is it? Ham Wong. Salted, salted egg yolk, yolk shrimp. shrimp. A lot of times you have salted egg yolk stuff that kind of like half-asses it. They went the whole way. And I love it because the more slits that you make into the skin, and when you cook it, the skin gets cooked more so you can eat all of it. Sometimes you don't want to eat the shrimp skin. I understand it can get really thick on the big shrimp, but this one, eat the whole thing. I gotta dip it in the chili oh. crab sauce. Okay. Oh, you about to. Five out of five? Five out of five? Five out of five. These two are must gets. If you get any two things, get these two things. Five. I'm going back in. Ooh. I'm not even kidding you. This plate is indestructible. Like you could, after you're done eating with it, I'm not even kidding you. Take it as high as you can and throw it on the floor. If it's, <laughs> and it's All right, so we're looking at martabak, which is a shared dish. Uh, they eat it in Indonesia as well, but they also have it in Malaysia, Singapore. And then we have roti kanai, which is from the Indian state of Chennai, Ooh. which is actually where I believe Kamala Harris's mom is from. Oh yeah, Chennai. Meat in this? Yeah, that's beef. This is my first time eating beef <coughs> in like six months. It reminds me of a guo kui. What? Got little, little peppers in there. What? Delicious. I swear, like I'm. I'm not just saying that. You know what? Over here. Yeah. Salil is from New Delhi, so he was probably like, "Yo, how do I kick up even that's Singaporean food to the next level?" This is your traditional roti chennai. Mm. Jack, you ate an entire one of these in about 30 seconds mm. off camera. Okay. There's a beauty to that simplistic dish. David, are you insinuating that I actually wanted to put the roti into the chili crab sauce? Yes, you were right. Andrew, I one up you with the martabak in the chili crab oh, sauce. Oh, the, wait a minute. Oh, with the raw egg, with the raw egg. The sauce you could dip with anything. I think the martabak one. I'm going you know what? Roti. I'm trying to eat less Guys, meat. If, you, if you're trying to eat less meat, go with the roti janaya. If you want meat, martabak. Coming up next, we have the chicken battles. Here we have the, of course, the world famous Hainan chicken rice, and then we have the chicken satay. This is like comparing two I mean, all stars right bro, here. Bro, you're talking about here the national dish of Singapore, Hainan chicken rice. And then, of course, this is like the national dish of almost like Southeast Asia slash, you know, Malay, Indonesia, Singapore, chicken satay. The quality of this meat is just phenomenal. Wow. All right, guys, here we have the Hainan chicken rice. You can get this dish at a lot of places. A hundred other places. A hundred other places, but I'm really interested to see how they do it. There's no bones in this. It is soaking in a little bit of the soy sauce. That's how they do it. Let me get a little ginger. Singapore chicken, chicken rice. rice. Mm. You know, being all, we all can't tell, we had a lot of ginger in our life, but I don't know if I had ginger like that. That ginger sauce alone is one of the better ginger oils I've had. You've been to Malaysia, you've been to Singapore. I gotta put you on the spot. What, what do you think has better chicken rice? Malaysia. <laughs> All right, you guys, what are we thinking in terms of the chicken skewers versus the chicken rice? Oh, I'm rolling with the chicken rice 100%. Yeah, I'm doing the chicken rice too. So good. I concur. Our last battle here at Loud Singapore, we have the Singapore laksa. So this was Anthony Bourdain's uh, favorite dish at Laut and uh, his favorite dish in Malaysia. And if it wasn't for him, I don't think we would have been on this map. So. Thank you, even wherever you are. It's a tamarind flavor noodle. Look at this. So you you're saying that it's see a the flavor, and then we have the nasi lemak. We got that. I feel like I've had this in Indonesia before. Try it. What is this? Oh, the expanding oh, it's napkin in a little bathtub. Hell yeah. Oh wow. With all the technology that we have in the world right now, that is still cool yeah, to watch. All right, actually, our hands are gonna get dirty eating this nasi lemak. Asam, Asam laksa. laksa, Anthony Bourdain's favorite. I gotta come clean, I'm not the biggest fan of Assam laksa. In general, I would take curry laksa over it, but this Assam laksa here at Laut Singapore is fire. Would you say it touches your chakras? Uh, it's hand, it's hand all the chakras. It's like really refreshing and spicy at the same time. It does kind of remind me sort of like a papaya salad in a noodle form. That is definitely a Southeast Asian flavor. Immediately, the nasi lemak looks a lot different than kapi tiam. I think this is like a rendang. This is a sambal sauce over shrimp. This is the Laut Singaporea kimchi. Pretty sure they do not call that Singaporean kimchi. They, they probably don't, that's I'm probably sure just that the that way is, they describe it. That is a New York it. way to describe yes. it. Ooh. Nasi, Nasi lemak. I, I think we're the only table eating this way. We in flat iron eating with our hands. Mm. We gotta bring some of that 
Authentic man. Authentic. In Malaysia, you did the right thing by eating with your hands. I am so proud of you. Like, I could not be more proud of you for doing that. In Singapore, like, chopsticks, would they would only probably use it just for noodles, perhaps? It's better off your hands, man. You're not tasting any of the metal, the plastic. I think they would be proud of us saying that we're using our hands right now. What is that? Is that like a mango cabbage? That's juicy, fruity cabbage, bro. And you want to experience something, ABC or Asian American, come to Loud Singapore. You're going to get some really high-end, nice dishes. And then you can also get your hands dirty on some nasi lemak. What a range of activities that you can do here. We went from Penang, Malaysia, to upscale Singapore. As much as we make these jokes about Loud Singapore being really high-end and for like ritzy people, it's actually like does still embody a lot of like the hawker stall vibe in the food. Even in Crazy Rich Asians, they still love going to the hawker style. I don't think we've got to talk about this on camera. Andrew and Richie were in about like three frames of uh, Crazy Rich Asians. I was in the background. I'll pop up a picture. Boom, boom, here's me, here's me. Here's the side of my face, and then here's Richie. Could I get in the second one, John? Do the audition right now. It's okay, even if you love him, la, but he, you are not rich, la. It's still going to be love. All right, cut. All right, yours. <laughs> Constance, man, I've been loving you since the New York days when we used to eat at Lao Singapore. <laughs> All right, cut. All right, Dave, you get the part. All right. <laughs> it's just you try harder. So this right here is uh, deep fried tiger sugar boba ice cream. Oh. What? This is a ice cream bar deep fried. People from the Queen's Night Market are doing their pop-up today. Uh, they're doing a pancake with sticky rice, durian, sticky rice ice cream, coconut cream. Loud Singapore, obviously they have some things that are fusion, but the important thing to remember about fusion, as long as it's intentional. Durian taco. taco. Mm. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. That taco is good. And there's some rice in the ice cream. This is a deep fried ice cream bar. Ooh, real crispy. Hear it. Ooh, wow. You heard of fried ice cream before, but I've never seen a fried ice cream bar. Yo, Tiger Sugar, the hottest boba chain in the world right now. You know how, you know how much Jack loves boba. That's deadly sweet, bro. That might need to make it on Subtle Asian Traits, the fried Tiger yes. Sugar bar. So Leo, how, how do we just go uh, in? We just crack it? We wrap all just around it, yeah. Huh? Salted egg yolk ice cream. You guys have probably never seen anything like this. I know I have. The salted egg yolk is strong with this one, man. This might be the most inventive dessert I've had in like a year. I mean, I eat a lot of desserts. David, you're a dessert guy. I eat like like more desserts than I probably should. Between the salted egg yolk ice cream, the salted egg yolk shrimp, those are the two best salted egg yolk things oh, I've ever I've had. had. Killed it. That caps off wow. an excellent, incredible journey we had here at Loud Singapore. Uh, I gotta say the salted egg yolk things were my personal favorite between the shrimp and the ice cream. I think so many times I'm disappointed by the flavor. It's there, they capture it for a moment and they let yeah. it go. Oh, no. Here they they got it and then they crush it yeah. like you crush <laughs> that roti. We started off with the egg yolk and chili crab and then they topped us off with this egg yolk ice cream. Oh my God. My favorite things from Loud Singapore actually are the chili crab and the nasi lemak. I don't know when the next time we're gonna be able to travel internationally to be honest but this was as good as it's gonna get. This is why we do the whole World NY series is because even within New York, just when you thought you had been to a lot of places, there's still streets that you haven't been to, still neighborhoods you haven't visited, and still cuisines that you may have never had. Man, I'm just happy to be back breaking my vegetarian diet. Was worth it, it worth breaking your diet? Totally worth it. Super glad I came, it's fantastic. I mean, look at this guy. If he gains like a percentage of fat, he's gonna, He's gonna be mad at himself. No, no, no. I'm gonna be disappointed. Thank you so much for watching this Singaporean Malaysian episode of the World NY. Huge shout out to Jack. I feel like I'm traveling right now. Did I get stamps in my passport? When the body cannot travel, travel in the mind. If you guys like that video, uh, hit that like button, click subscribe, turn on your notifications. And in the comments down below, let us know if there's any other restaurants in New York that you would like us to check out for this World NY series. All right, everybody, thanks for watching that video. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace. Yo, this guy John could not hold himself back. We told him wait to get the Kayato's bite. He could not wait. Sometimes things are just too exciting, man. Mm, it's one of those things where it's actually mind blowing that it's not more popular in the US. Having been to Singapore and seeing how popular it is, it's so good. And it would be like dipping a peanut butter jelly into an egg mixture and then frying it because you got the sweet, the kaya, the jam, I don't know. Imagine that.